Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another long awaited video with the uh, SV1000. I haven't done an SV uh, video for quite some time because I've been busy with other projects. Uh, but I, uh, yeah, I thought it would be worthwhile getting, uh, getting back onto the big V-twin and uh, carrying on with some of, the, uh, some of the tasks that I need to do with the bike. And in today's video, I'm going to be carrying out a replacement of the, uh, the fork oil seals and um, basically giving the whole fork system a, a complete rebuild. So I've got the internal slide bushings, um, all the seals, uh, washers, everything that's needed to completely rebuild the, um, the forks. Now, based upon the um, overall general condition of the bike when I got it, I'm not uh, expecting to see the internals of the forks to be in particularly good condition. I wouldn't be surprised if the oil in these forks is original. Um, just because the bike feels, you know, I get the impression that the bike hasn't been particularly well loved. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we'll be putting fresh oil in, um, replacing all the seals, all the bushes, etc, etc. So before we can do any of that, obviously we need to get the uh, the forks off the bike. And before we can get the forks off the bike, we need to get the front wheel and the mudguard off. So that's where we will start. <laughs> Right then, as I said, what we need to do is obviously we need to drop the front wheel off, uh, take the mode guard off, remove the brakes from the forks um, before we can actually remove the fork legs from the yokes. Um, so where we'll begin is the pinch bolts down here at the bottom of the fork legs. Um, now these should not be overly tight. There is a torque spec for them and the torque spec should be respected at all times. The problem with these is if you over tighten these bolts, it, it, will, it can it can and invariably does crack the casting at the bottom of the fork and you're looking at a new fork leg. Um, so bear in mind that if you're gonna tighten them up, use a torque wrench, that's what they're for. So all I'm doing here is just removing the bolts on the brake disc onto the bottom of the fork leg. So one and two, and then these just need to be nice and loose they don't need to come all the way out right now i probably will do later but it's not important right now okay so now the um brake caliper will come off the disc nice and easy and there we are just like so that looks like it could do with a nice clean out the pads don't look terrible but they are quite low so they do need replacing so that's another job for another video uh, i'll probably do a complete overhaul of the of the calipers anyway um and you know replace all the seals and all that good stuff um i do need to remove that little uh that little um screw there um and then uh in fact actually to be fair i don't i can just free the cable from the clamp just like so right now um, this bike does have braided hoses which are a lot stronger however on bikes equipped especially with rubber hoses you don't want to leave the, the calipers hanging like this so what we're going to do is we're going to um, if I can find somewhere I can hook my bungee into we're going to um, hang the caliper so that it's not put a strain on the on the um, on the brake hose so um, I do I actually think I need a different uh, bungee because this one doesn't quite fit <laughs> into the hole so I'll go and grab a different one uh, and yeah and then basically what I can do is I can hang it from the bungee and it's taking the strain off the hoses right so as you can see now I've got a bungee holding up the uh, the calipers on both sides I've got one that actually fitted through the hole so we're all good what I've also done is I've taken the liberty of undoing the pinch bolts uh, on the other side as well so we're uh, we're ready now to drop the wheel out now spindle on the front wheel of the sv this is a 24 mil allen um not it's not a common tool um what i do have however is i have a flywheel puller which happens to have a 20 fill mil bolt head so what i'm going to do i'm going to be a bit heath robinson with this and use this to try and free it off 
Um, it's a little bit unconventional, but I'm fairly confident that it will work. And it is. As you can see, it's turning nicely. As I said, a little bit Heath Robinson, but if a stupid idea works, is it a stupid idea? Right, this is going to take a little while, so I'll thread this out and I'll see you in a sec. And there we go, that is the front wheel removed. So now we're free to get into the mud guard because there's a couple of bolts just on the inside uh, that hold it onto the fork leg and then this little allen headed screw on each side as well. So we'll get them out and then the mudguard will come off. Okay, as I said, just on the inside, a couple of little 10 mil bolts. Which to be fair, considering their location and the fact that they've been hammered by years of road rubbish, they're uh, coming out pretty easily. One advantage of them, I suppose, is is that the outside is completely enclosed, so it makes it harder for salt and stuff to get in to uh, into the threads. Um, however, these ones here, as you can see, they're open at the back, so that might be a completely different kettle of fish. So let's have a little look, see how we get on. I am not anticipating these coming out easily, but we'll see. I've been surprised before. Ooh, there we go. I'll take it back. Although I may have spoken too soon because we've got another one on the other side yet. Come on, get off there. It has twisted ever so slightly in the screw. There we go. All right. Yeah, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised. And then there is the mud guard. There we go. Um, this fender extender, they're a good idea. Um, the only thing about them I don't like is the fact that it's a, it's a different colour. Um, I've got the screws, uh, the screws, the holes, should I say, left over from when I did the brake upgrade, the brake line upgrade. And I do fancy the idea of um, filling in this joint, filling in those holes, and then having the whole thing painted so it's all the same colour. Um, and I may do that uh, moving forward, but obviously not today. Right, I'll put this to one side, and then we can actually look at removing the forks from the bike. Right then, so we've got the front wheel off, mud guards off, um, the forks are just held into the upper and lower um, yokes or triple trees depending upon where you're from in the world. Um, so yeah, if we uh, release the, the bolts on the top, top yoke, the bolt on the bottom yoke and the clip-ons, the fork legs will just slide out. Perfectly, uh, perfectly good, everyone's happy. However, before we do so, what we do need to do is free off these top caps. Um, if we don't do this before we drop the forks out of the bike, we'll have to put them back in the yokes and tighten them up so that we can do it because they are nigh on impossible to undo when the fork isn't in the bike because the whole fork will just want to turn instead. So these, uh, these on the SV are 22. So with a good fitting socket, making sure it's a good fitting socket, six, uh, six sided if you've got one, um, just crack them off just like so and happy days same for the other one there we go that's all we need to do just loosen them off so that we can wind them out perfectly easily once we've removed the forks from the bike so next what we need to do is the bolts on the clip-ons the top yoke and the bottom yoke and then we can slide the four legs out Right then, holding the uh, fork legs into the yokes. Uh, here we've got a 12 mil 
uh, bolt and on the clip on we've got a, uh, a 10 mil uh, bolt both of those are going to get loosened off so if we start on the top yoke first you know they're not overly tight they're, they're pinch bolts at the end of the day there's one same on the other side Brake reservoir in the way. Loosened. There we go. Right, switch to my 10 mil and do the same on each clip on. Just loosen them till they're finger tight, basically. And there we go. You can see it's nice and loose on the fork. And same on this side. Same again, nice and loose. Okay, next, bottom yoke. Okay, so the whole, the only thing holding each of these four legs now to the bike is the clamp on the bottom yoke. And there's two bolts. Um, don't know if you can see them from where you are. There's two two bolts on each one. Yeah, you should be able to see that. Um, and both of them need, need freeing off. So if I do one first, now nice and loose and then the second one I'm probably gonna need to get in with a socket actually to be fair because it's a little bit it's a bit shielded by the other by the other uh, the other bolt so I may come back to that one in a second with a with a socket let's do the other side in fact what I could do is probably just pull the bolt all the way out and that'll give me room to get into the other one. And would you believe it? The steering damper is in the way. Yeah, the steering damper is in the way on that one. So yeah, I'm definitely going to need a socket to get into that. So I'll go and grab a socket and then we'll have a go at the other ones. Okay, what I've gone for is a 12mm uh, a deep socket, just so it gives me room to work over the top of the steering damper. And then, there we go, I can now loosen that pinch bolt, which is now finger loose. And they both should be. And there we go. Right, so now this fork should slide out of the yokes. So coming up here, what I'm going to do is just keep an eye on things because we've got things wrapped around such as hoses and cables and what have you. Working the fork down, making sure that the clip on clears. Free of the fork. And there we go. Right, so we can rest that there. It's not going to fall and damage anything. And I think it's a fair bit of dirt and slime and grunge stopping the fork coming down. And there we are. So that is the first fork out of the bike. Now all I need to do, repeat that for the other one and then we can get them on the bench. Okay, here we are on the bench with both the forks. As you can see, they're pretty minging, uh, especially around here. No idea what all this gammy, greasy gunge is, but we'll clean all that off before we uh, reassemble them. The fork lowers, as you'd expect, get a bit, get a bit dirty because um, of their location on the bike. Right, um, what I'm gonna do is we're going to pull one apart, we're going to change everything that we need to change, we're going to put it back together, 
and replace the oil, all that good stuff. So I'll just do one. Uh, obviously the other fork leg is going to be identical. The only difference is uh, on this one is this cup needs to be removed. This is what the the wheel spindle screws into uh, with these pinch bolts um, undone. This just basically slides out and it will be need to be slid out because you need access to the bolt in the bottom. Uh, in the bottom of here there's a bolt which holds the damper rod into the fork lower um, and we will need to get that out. So um, that is where we're going to start first because we need to uh, we need to basically buzz it out with a impact wrench um, before we uh, before we start uh, stripping it apart because if we don't and we try and take that out all that'll happen is the damper rod inside will just spin and we'll uh, we'll be we'll be stuck so uh, yeah that's where we'll uh, that's where we'll start we'll start on that bottom bolt right then as I said what we're gonna do is we're just gonna buzz the, uh, the bottom bolt out we, well, I say out, we're not taking it out. All we're going to do is just loosing it. Uh, we don't want to take it all the way out because it's holding the damper rod to the foreleg. And if we do, it'll, the whole thing will just fall apart. Um, so, yeah. There we go. That is more than enough. I don't know if you saw there, the, uh, the foreleg was spinning. Uh, so I grabbed hold of it and it has come out and it started to weep oil, as you can see, just there like that. So um, yeah, that's what we've done. We've uh, we've cracked that off. So when we come to get that off um, later on, it, it should come out without any problems and we should be able to separate the damper rod. Right, what I need to do now, this is gonna be very, very messy. So I need to get some workshop tissue out uh, and just protect my bench a little bit because it's gonna go everywhere, this oil. Okay, now we've done that, you can see it's, uh, it is weeping quite heavily. What we need to do now is just remove the top cap, and this is where cracking it before you take it off the fork, uh, off the bike, helps because now we would be struggling to undo it, and the uh, the fork leg would be spinning instead. It'll get to a point where it'll probably pop, just like so. Nothing too drastic. People think it's going to fire off into the roof. And it really isn't. So there we go. Now, what we need to do is drain all the oil out of this fork. Okay, what we're gonna do, just tip all the old fork up. And this is absolutely bit minging, by the way. Just tip it all into my waste oil container. This, uh, this oil looks like it's been in there a little while. Pump it back and forward, which will empty the damper out. Obviously I've spilled a bit all over the bench, all over the floor, so this isn't something you want to do in your kitchen. Pretty much empty, or as empty as it's going to get. Right, so what I'm going to do is just have a little bit of a clean up and then we can move on to the next stage. Okay, what we can do now, um, the little washer on the top can come off. The spacer, uh, the spacer can't come out until such times we've taken the top knot off, so we'll do that next. This nut here is a lock nut, 17 millimeter. And what you need to do is with a 14 mil socket on the top, just crack them apart. Just like so. And then that will spin off the top of the damper. There we go. And in here, you've got the rod, which is for your, adjust your adjustment, which is what this acts on when you adjust it. But now the space can come off. And there we go. Right, next, down in here, we've got the spring. Pull that out. Stick that down there. As you can see, we're still losing quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of oil. Okay, so 
Now, what we can do is we can buzz the damper out. Right, okay, so it is spinning. I don't know if you could hear that. So what we will need to do is we will need to hold it steady. Now, if you look down here, you can see that the, the top of the damper is actually squared. So what we can do is we can pop something down there if I can find something. I think I've got some uh, steel tube. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's quite dark down there. Um, but I have, to, I have got some steel tube, which I may be able to push down there. Copper pipe, something like that, um, just to hold it still so we can get that bolt out properly. Right then, what I've done, um, to make my life easier, because I've made a made a little tool, a very, very Heath Robinson tool. It's uh, very rough engineering at best. Uh, but this is basically just a piece of stainless steel pipe. Now this end here has got some four little castellations on, as you can see. And I did that so that I could do this very same job on my uh, Yami R1, um, because the, uh, the damper rod in that has four castellations. With this bike, what I've done is I've taken the other end, I've squashed it ever so slightly, so it's gone a bit flatter, and then I've cut two two pegs of, in effect and although you're not going to be able to see it I can see where those two little pegs are going to engage what I'll do I'll show you once I've got the damper I'll show you now what I need to do is slide this over the top of the damper now what I have done is made sure that it fits over the over the uh, lock nut if it didn't like you could have always taken it out it wouldn't have been a, an absolute showstopper um, and then now now that is engaged in the damper, I'll be able to buzz this out. There we go. There's the bolt. There is the sealing washer. We've got a new one of those in the kit. If I take my, my tool, I can now withdraw the damper rod and there we go. So that's the damper rod, and here you can see what I was talking about. If I slide that back over, it fits in just like so. Either way, either there or there, makes no odds. Um, but yeah, that's done the job. Uh, and now I've got a multi-purpose tool. I could do Yamaha R1 and I can do SV1000. Um, so I'll put that back where I got it from. To be fair, I haven't actually used this since the last time I did the fork seals on my R1, um, which was quite some time ago. But you know, it's it, it, that's about a four pound piece of steel I think and it does the job absolutely perfect I suppose what I could do I could drill a hole through and put a handle on if I really really wanted to but I've never felt the need um, because you know it's, uh, it's it's doing the job right so here's the bolt here's the ceiling washer and here we are with the one possibility is washer gun and hose does that one sound good thanks Siri uh, no idea what she's going on about um, right Right, <laughs> we'll uh, now in a position where we can separate the um, start to separate the uh, the legs from the uh, from the bottom. So what we need to do, take the protector off, take the dust seal off, and then there's a few things underneath the dust seal which need removing, and then we can get them apart. Okay, what I'm going to do now is going to remove the uh, the fork protector inside there. There should be an oil lock piece which is at the bottom of the uh, fork tube. I reckon if I give it a good bang, it might fall out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that is what's known as an oil lock piece, and it goes on the underneath the damper just like so. That's that's basically how that one sits. So we'll leave that there. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use a little drift to remove the fork protector. I don't want to obviously damage it, so I'm not going to go crazy on it. Gently tapping it round. Yeah, it's moving, it's moving. So we're all good. I'm just a bit slippery with oil. This is an incredibly dirty job and fork oil smells horrible. Oop. Slippery. is going to be one of those things that's going to take a few little hits so I'll, I'll get this off and then I'll bring it back in a sec. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. There is the protector off. It took a little bit of tapping. Um, I ended up using a little pry bar and just knocking it round the uh, other way. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, came off all right. It's um, in decent condition. It's fine. Right. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the dust seal. Now, this dust seal has been on here a little while, I think, but oh, no, there we go. It's coming off. Pull that off. Uh, a bit rusty in there. Cool. Yeah, look. A bit rusty there is a ring in there which there's obviously allowed that dust seal has um, obviously allowed a bit of moisture past and uh, the retaining ring has suffered from corrosion okay so around here you can see there's the ring just there I'm pointing the screwdriver right at it that's what we need to do we need to lever that out out of place and then uh, that is what's holding the, the basically the, the whole thing together I need to find the end of it though, that's the, because that isn't the end, the bit I was just pointing at, and it's a bit rusty. There's the end. Right. So, just go around, leave the sucker out. Come on, leave that there. Same this side. And the same this side. Go all the way around. Yeah, it's, it's literally rusted in solid. There we go. I think we got it. There we are. Now there's a new one of these in the kit as well, so that'll be redundant too. Right, now we are in a position to be able to separate the tubes, uh, well, the tube from the forks uh, lower, the stanchion from the fork leg. Now to do that, what we need to do is basically use it kind of like a slide hammer type action. We're going to bang them as hard as we can against each other because what we need to do is we need to overcome the, uh, the slide bushing that's inside here. Now that slide bushing is sat uh, kind of like an interference fit inside this and what we need to do is use the bottom of the fork leg to bang it out. So we're gonna basically this kind of an action as hard as we can um, and hopefully they will come apart. Now I have been in a position before where it's taken absolute flame and ages to get these apart, and they may well be the same here, especially as there is a little, uh, you know, evidence of rust at the top here. I'm not sure how they're going to come apart, but we'll uh, we'll we'll give it a go. So yeah, that's uh, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do, as I said, is just a repeat slide hammer action, and hopefully it will pop the slide bushing out of the fork leg. So here we go. Wish me luck. Came apart quite well. So you can see now what we were doing. That is the bushing that's on the fork leg. That is the bushing that is inside here. So what we're doing is we're we're hammering them against each other, and that one is basically knocking this one out. So that was what we were intending to do, and as you can see, it actually did. So um, here's the rusty old fork seal, oil seal. Um, it's a bit a bit naff. Got a spacer washer. And then we've got the bushing, the one that goes inside here. That's where it sits basically just there, like so. That's where it sits. And then we've got the other one, which is on the stanchion, just like so. Pop it apart and it will just slide off. Okay, so there we are. That is as far as we're going to, uh, we're going to strip it. What we're going to do now is give everything a really good clean and then uh, we'll be in a position to reassemble using the new parts um, for the uh, for the rebuild. So yeah, um, all of that is junk. All of this basically is is rubbish, along with the uh, copper washer uh, and all that's going to go in the bin and be replaced. So yeah, what we'll do: give everything a clean, and then uh, I'll bring you back when we're ready to reassemb uh, reassemble. I'm going to. Replace obviously with tissue because it's absolutely filthy. Right then, okay, so everything nice and clean. Uh, I've cleaned this as best I can. Um, it's a bit of like etched in dirt that I just literally cannot get off, but it's on the inside where you can't see anyway. And it's not, it's a couple of scratches on it, but it's nothing, uh, nothing too terrible. Uh, it's to be expected on a bike of this age. Right. The tube itself, I've given it a good look over, and it's um, what we're looking for here is any nicks 
um, and if I rub my fingers down it, I can't feel any like raised bits. Um, it actually feels in pretty good condition. Um, there's the odd scratch around here where the yolks have clamped it, but other than that, this is this fork leg. I'm, it's surprisingly in good, really good condition. So um, we're ready to put everything together. I'm really, really happy with everything. It all looks good. Um, the damper rod uh, operates perfectly well. Um, one thing worth mentioning, I suppose, is the spring itself. Now there is a service limit on the springs. If they are, uh, well, the service limit is 290 millimeters. If the, if the spring is, when measured, is shorter than 290 millimeters, it is to be replaced with a brand new one um, because it is, you know, it's obviously lost its um, springiness, uh, its elasticity and needs to be replaced. This particular one, when measured, was 296, so we're well, well outside the, uh, um, the tolerance. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at the, the kit. Um, let's see what we've got in here. Right. Okay, so here we've got little um, seals. There's seals on here, and there's also a seal here. Um, more seals. We've got the uh, sealing washers for the bottom. We've got uh, the new uh, retaining clips for the seals. We've got bushes. We've got all sorts of things in here. Slide bushes. Here we go, look, here's the, here's the, uh, the replacement slide bushes. So one goes on the fork here, which is the fatter one of the two. That one goes on the end of the stanchion. And the other one is the inner one, or should I say the outer one, actually, uh, for the inside of the uh, lower fork leg. So yeah, let's um, let's start by assembling one. Um, what we'll do is get the slide bushes out of their package. Okay, put that to one side for the moment. I can go in there. Now, what we'll do is take the brand new bush and just slide it into position over the leg just like so and that is all good now this one will simply slide over the top like that and then our spacer washer which we removed is going to go down and sit over the top there now what we need to do is put the stanchion with the lower fork leg and to do that we are going to drive this bush down into this recess Okay, so what we'll do, we'll take the stanchion, slide it inside the fork leg. It's a nice fit that, it fits really, really nicely inside there. There's no uh, wiggle room. And then that's, that bush there is gonna sit inside that recess in the fork leg, as we discussed. Drop that um, spacer down, and then that gives us something for our um, fork driver, fork seal driver to purchase on. And then, Take our tool and bang it all the way around. I think we're good. I felt felt like it dropped in, uh, and yes, it did. So uh, if you look there, it's um, it's in place. I think it could probably do with a little bit more going in a little bit further, but I think we were at the limit of the tool to be honest, because it's quite deep. Yeah, as you can see, we're at the limit of the tool. So what I can do is as long as I don't damage the uh, fork leg, I can just drive down onto the uh, onto that spacer washer and just make sure that it's fully seated. So I'll do that and then I'll bring you back. Okay, there we are, look, as you can see, it's fully seated all the way around uh, and it won't go any, any further than that. That's as far as it's gonna go. So I'll put the spacer back on and there we go. Right, now we are ready to fit um, some seals. Now, one thing I will point out with seals is everybody gets a little bit excited about um, damaging seals over the top of the tube and all that good stuff because they reckon it's like razor sharp and all that, all that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to say this now, right? Never ever have I damaged a fork seal um, by just sliding over the top. Never once. And I've done this countless times um, and I've never had a leakage. So if you want to, by all means, go and spend the money on those tools. And I've even seen people using like sides of milk bottles and stuff to shield it if you want it then buy if it if it makes you feel good and sleep at night then by all means do so but i have never damaged a fork seal just by 
put in a little bit of red rubber grease and then sliding over. Never, never have, never have. So um, I'm not going to change my habits. That's the way I do things. But obviously your bike, you do what you want. You're the one that's paying for your seals. So um, do, you know, do whatever you feel. Right, okay, so anyway, enough nattering on. What we do need to do now is actually fit the uh, fit the seal. Um, so yeah, I'll grab me uh, red rubber grease, which is in amongst this lot somewhere, and then uh, we can get it fitted. Okay, now I'm gonna give a dead little dab of red rubber grease on the inside of here. You can obviously use your fork coil to lubricate it, but I've got red rubber grease, so I'm gonna use it. Now, there is the right way up and a wrong way up. The, the flat side goes upwards, because that's what the spring um, sits on. And then you've got like a little weird um, spring inside there that points downwards towards the oil. So what I need to do is just pop this over, making sure that the flange of the seal sits correctly on the fork, which it is. And then now I can slide it down and we're all good. Now, what I was saying a minute ago about damaging fork seals, it, um, when I was doing my checks to make sure there was no raised bits, um, those can nick your seals. If you've got raised bits on your, you know, from stones or whatever, then you, you, you know, you, you need to really stone them out. Uh, you can do that with an oil stone, that you just stone them out so that they're nice and smooth. Uh, and then you're uh, you're golden. Or if if you prefer, you can just buy new stanchions. Um, but it's a bit wasteful if you don't need to, because you literally can just stone them out. Okay. Seal driver again. And then. far enough down because we'll be able to see the little uh, recess for the spring to sit in. And there we go. Okay, so if I show you now, you can see the recess for the spring to sit in and that means we're far enough down. So now we can fit our retaining clip. Brand new retaining clip, not an old rusty one like we took off. And all we do is fold it inside so that it clips into the little slot. So it clicks into place, just like you heard probably. You probably heard that. And then just double check all the way around, make sure it is sitting in its slot which it is. Okay, we're all good. Right, that is the oil seal installed. Next, the dust seal. So take our dust seal again. I'm gonna put a little bit of red rubber grease just around the inside, just like that. And then pop her over and then push her down until she's retained, just like so. And that is the fork seals replaced. And it slides very, very nicely up and down. And there we go, right. Now what we need to do is obviously reassemble the fork and get some oil in it. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's move on with the next step. Right, what we need to do next is we need to fit the, uh, the damper. Now, with the damper, we're going to obviously have to put the bolt back in and we've got a new ceiling washer for that as well. Talking of ceiling washers, I just want to point out something. There's these ones in the kit as well. Now, I have absolutely no idea what these are in the kit for because they don't, there's nowhere for them. So uh, I'm going to put them to one side. Um, I've even looked at the exploded diagram in the, um, in the factory maintenance manual and th th there isn't anything in the exploded diagram either. So. Um, yeah, I'm uh, stunned as to what they could be. Likewise, um, we've got two sets of seals here. Um, I've no idea what one of these is for, so that's going to one side as well, but this one is the one for here, um, as expected. So yeah, there's there's two sets of um, copper washers and there's two sets of O-rings, and I don't know what the difference is. 
or if any, um, between the two, but I cannot see anywhere where they would be used. The only thing I can think of is that this kit is also used on a different bike um, with similar forks, perhaps, I don't know, like a TL Thau or something like that, I'm not sure. Um, they do have upside down forks though, actually, so it, it probably isn't a TL Thau. Uh, so yeah, it may, maybe the same part number uh, of the kit you, is used on a different bike and those parts are utilized on that, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. What we need to do is fit our damper. Now, this is the part where we are gonna need to use our little tool that we made. We're getting the new washer on, just like so. Um, and then we'll fit, our, we'll fit our damper. Now, not forgetting, obviously, that part. And then make the two together. make sure that they're sitting centrally there we go just like so and then we can take our bolt and fit it to the fork leg now the manual does call for some thread lock so I'm gonna add a little bit of thread lock comes out come on just a dab and then feed it in screw her up let's get her up to touch and there's the damper starting to turn okay so what we need to do now is torque it to spec. The torque spec for that bolt is 23 newton meters, which I've got my torque wrench set to. There we are. Right, I need my tube. Get my tube in place. up to touch that feels good the damper's actually not moving so we're doing okay so far I might not actually need the tool so I get the torque wrench on and just there we are absolutely perfect so that is the damper installed and we're all good okay so now what we need to do is look at getting some oil in it um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's grab me bottles of oil. Now, while we're talking about oil, um, oil is a very subjective thing um, and it depends upon you, the way you ride, your height, weight, etc, etc. Now I'm uh, of the fairly rotund persuasion, so I prefer to use a 10W oil. Um, that way there's, uh, uh, you know, the, the oil's doing what it needs to do. It's not too thin, so much so that we're bottoming out and fully compressing the spring. Um, on these forks, it takes uh, 594 milliliters of oil per leg. Um, so a, one one liter bottle will do you um, for the SV. Um, I've got uh, 700 mil in that one, and I've got another liter there just in case. Um, I, I, you know, just in case I did need it. Some bikes annoyingly take like 590 milliliters, so you end up needing more than one bottle. Uh, I think that's why I ended up with this actually, because I think I did a VFR oil change. Uh, or fork oil change. I think that takes something like 596 milliliters or something like that. So obviously I needed one whole litre uh, bottle plus a bit. Anyway, less of the waffle. Let's uh, let's get some oil in it and uh, start that process. Right, what I've got here is I've got a tool which is specifically for um, sorting out oil in forks. Now, as I said before, it's for 494 milliliters. Um, of oil. Now that's very, very difficult to get 100% accurate. What I prefer to do is uh, measure the air gap. Now the book gives you both the amount of oil you need, which helps you buy the right amount of oil, um, and it also gives you the air gap. Now the air gap on this bike is 162 uh, millimeters. So in order to achieve that, what we do is we use this little tool here. Now 
you can see on this tube hopefully it's like a ruler basically you can see it's got gradients all the way up it and 162 uh 162 millilitre, uh, millimeters is where are we 160s there and it's going to be there so that from the this face here to the bottom is 162 millimeters so hopefully you can see how this is going to work what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my fork you fully compress the stanchion do not fit the spring because this is done without the spring fitted we pour oil in and then we put this tool on there just like that so you can see that the, the end of this tube is 162 mil down the stanchion we then use this to suck out oil um, and then what we will be left with once we can't suck any more oil out is 162 mil gap now obviously there are other ways you can do this if you don't have one of these tools. These tools aren't expensive by the way, I think it's about a tenner. Uh, if you do a lot of forks then it's worth um, investing in one. Um, you can use a vernier. So for example, if we zero that, set this to... Well actually, to be fair, this one only goes up to 155. But you get the idea. That would be... you could use that to measure the gap if, <laughs> if yours went up beyond 155 which mine obviously doesn't. Um, likewise, you could use a steel rule, and I've seen that done. Um, just basically put the oil in and then measure all the way down so it's there. There's 162, and you wanna basically have the end of your oil, um, the, the end of your ruler dry. They're all a little bit, those methods are all a little bit Heath Robinson. This is much more accurate and the, the reason why I bought the tool in the first place. Okay, anyway, less of the waffle. Let's get some oil in it and get the, uh, get the air gap set right. Right, as I said, fork stanchion, fully down. What I've done is I've uh, held the um, fork in a vice just to make my life a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna pour in Oil. Now I'm going to put in, I know that there were 700 mils in here, so I'm going to put in um, about 500. Otherwise I'll be here forever trying to pull it out. Right, the end of that is in the oil. So what I need to do though, is just give the give the damper a few pumps just to get the oil flow there we go it, it comes up really really easily and then suddenly as the oil's pulled into the damper you can feel it you know you can feel it uh, you can feel the resistance at the end of the day that's what the damper's there for okay so now the damper is full of oil at this point make sure you've got no leaks from your uh, from your bottom bolt because obviously that would be bad as well and again what i'm going to do so I'm going to see if the tool is in the oil and it doesn't appear to be. So I'll put a little bit more in. And there we go, we've got oil on the bottom of the tool. So now all we need to do is get my syringe and suck up just enough so that it's um, left with enough in there. And this can be a bit tricky. I'm pretty sure we're good. So if I give that a little wipe, top it in again, pull it out, and we're dry so there we go there is a 162 millimeter air gap between the top of this tube and the top of the oil so i am happy with that okay now what we can do is we can start assembling the rest of the components into the fork such as the spring uh, the top cap etc etc the spacer <sighs> 
Okay, next step, what we're gonna do is replace the O-ring on the top nut and take the old one off, throw it away. Now this one, I'm gonna put a little bit of red rubber grease on it and that is to help when it comes to actually screwing the top nut down. That way the, the seal won't bunch up and pinch. And it will do what it's supposed to do that way. I.e. seal and stop fork oil coming out. And there we go. I want my fingers on my trousers. And there we are, that is ready to install back onto the fork. Now, what I did was, uh, off the camera, giving this uh, fork leg a few pumps and the damper rod, a couple more pumps, just to make sure that there's no air left in the damper and um, that the fork level is, uh, the fork oil level, sorry, is uh, correct. So I give it a few pumps on both uh, and then I rechecked and we're, we're absolutely perfect. Um, I'm very happy with the, uh, the air gap and we're all good. So. What we'll do now is we will install the uh, the spring. Now, um, when it came out, you'll know you may have noticed. I don't know whether you did or not that the uh, the closer pitch um, coils of the spring were uppermost, and uh, just because they were like that doesn't necessarily mean they were um, supposed to be. But I've checked the manual and it tells you to install it that way. Um, it doesn't actually affect the operation of the spring um, if it's upside down or not, because obviously the spring works exactly the same in either orientation but it does say in the manual to put it in this way it may well find that it doesn't fit on the top of the damper correctly if it's that way around i don't know um so we'll pop that over drop that in obviously with this going in it will affect the oil level because the oil will the oil level will come up which is why you measure it without the uh the, without the spring installed okay next we've got the spacer and the and the little washer, which I've dropped on the floor, so I'll go and get that. Um, that slides over and just sits there on uh, on top of the spring. Right, give me a second. I'll go and grab me uh, washer, which I've clumsily thrown into the corner of the shed, and then uh, we'll fit that on next. Okay, here it is, and that simply slots over just like so. Now we could take our top nut. Screw it all the way down. Now, what I didn't do with this um, with this lock nut is I didn't really move it. I've left it in the same position it was in when I took it off. So I'm going to screw the top nut down and then just bring the lock nut up to meet it. That went on all the way as far as it would go. I couldn't screw the top nut down onto the damper rod any further than that. Right, next, what we need to do is just tighten that uh, lock nut up um, just to make sure that it's retained. Got me spanner and me lock and me 17 mil sp uh, spanner with me ratchet. And there we go, they are tight and I'm happy. Right now, we bring the fork leg up as high as it goes, compress the top nut down, and there we go. We can tighten her down. So, this is where the uh, bit of red rubber grease on the seal will do it good. That way it doesn't bunch up and get pinched, and it should slide nicely round as we're tightening down. And what I'm going to do is just nip it up like that, just up to touch, because we will never get the torque spec on that whilst it's uh, whilst it's off the bike. Okay, so if I take that off there now, and there we go, that's nice. Nice action, exactly as they should be. Absolutely perfect. Okay, top nut will be torqued when it's on the bike. I'll get the torque spec at the uh, at the book in a moment and let you know what it is. But other than that, we're uh, we're we're pretty much done. Um, I just need to do the other fork. Uh, I do need to put the protector back on, so I'll do that in a second. I'll go and find out what the torque spec is for that, and then I'll be back in a sec. Okay, there we are. Completed 
fork seal change, brand new fork oil. Check the book, the, um, the torque spec for the top nut is 23 newton meters, which is exactly the same as the, um, the damper rod bolt. What I need to do now, obviously, is I need to repeat everything I've just done on the other fork, which I'll do off the camera, um, and then once that's done, I can then install them back onto the bike. Now, I'm not gonna film that process because it's exactly the opposite of the, the way we removed them. Just um, ob obviously observing all the, the torque specs for the, for the yokes, etc., etc., and then making sure we do the top nut, uh, and then refit the wheel. What I will say is just make sure that these pinch bolts um, are torqued to the correct specification. From memory, it's 11 Newton meters, but again, I would have to check the book just to be certain. Don't over tighten them um, because you do risk cracking the castings and I've seen it countless times, especially on Facebook, Facebook groups and forums, etc., etc., where people have gone, is this fixable, can I weld this, etc., etc., because they have over torqued them and cracked them. Um, anyway, guys, that is that, that is that job. Absolutely 100% done, and I'm very happy with that. It went pretty smoothly, it wasn't too difficult at all. Hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, then please leave a comment down below, um, give it a like, etc. Um, and you know, all the good stuff. Hit, hit that subscribe button if, uh, if you want to see more. I've got quite a bit to do with the SV. Um, we're moving on with it. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, I haven't done anything for a while because I've been concentrating on other things, but you know, um, it, I want to get back on with it because I do want to. I do want to get it back on the road and get it riding um, because I do I do love that grunty V-twin sound, um, especially with these exhaust fitted. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. I'll, I'll end the waffle here and I'll see you all again for the very next video. You take care. Bye bye now.